everyone, and welcome to The Right Perspective. Today, we're going to recap and review The Last Dragon, a 1985 martial arts comedy film produced by Rupert Hitzig and Barry Gordy and directed by Michael Schultz. The film stars Ty Mac, Vanity, Julius Carey, Christopher Murney, and Faith Prince. The movie grossed $33 million on a budget of $10 million and featured Motown music, including Rhythm of the Night, a DeBarge song that went on to top the charts in the U.S. and the U.K. The movie oh, most, the movie, the movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got thrown with that little musical interlude. That Brittany. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was beautiful, Brittany. Don't you, don't you let Janai take away. She was trying to steal my shine. <laughs> That's why I feel the beat in the rhythm of the night. I'm not concerned about her. I'm not concerned about her. I just like a little warning when the beat's coming. That's all. The the movie boasts a strong cult following to this day. And some might consider these facts enough to consider this movie a classic. But today, we will determine whether it is a classic from The Right Perspective. We'll do a recap, discuss the movie, and then we'll take a vote using a voting symbol picked especially for this discussion. But we got to start with intros. Kick us off, bro. Hi, I'm Aubrey Wright, and I'm the oldest. I'm Janiah Wright, and I'm the middle. Hi, I'm Brittany Wright, and I am the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> and, as, and, and for our um, viewers that are tuning in on audio, you're actually really <laughs> missing out. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Brittany and I have put on <laughs> full '80s costume, yeah, for this for this podcast. Now you all are we probably wondering the rhythm of the night. You all are probably wondering why is an Aubrey also in the mood and in the spirit? Well, that's a good question, Aubrey. Can you help any of us understand why you are not also? Dress you didn't up. want to dance the night away? Well, well, apparently, can I say that this idea came up, we're supposed to start recording at six today. Uh-huh. And this idea actually came up at about 627. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds to me like as your point is timing. As I was patiently waiting. All I hear was perfect on, on the Zoom for my sisters to join me. And when they finally join, join me and ready to get started, then we start the whole process over because <laughs> now, and apparently, all we wanted him to do was go get some turntables in a boombox and cut the sleeves off of his shirt. I said, just cut. Put, don't don't you have a denim jacket? Everybody has a denim some jacket. Big bebop headphones. He didn't get them. <laughs> You have a gray sweatshirt. You could have just cut the sleeves off. We just wanted him to go get his ear pierced real quick. Gosh, or put on, put on a glove and cut the fingers out. Yeah. Where is this random <laughs> glove? Listen. What do you do? <laughs> you use your imagination, bro. You have these things on hand. I, you know, you know. Do you think I have it, 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 blue eyeshadow? I don't. This is lipstick on my eyes. Or would this would this be acceptable? <laughs> These are all real clothes that I wear. <laughs> would this, would this, Bro, would you don't have be, any sequin so clothing just laying this, around. My clothing choices. All right, let me ask you this: Would this be an acceptable '80s person for you? I, I have I have a black leather jacket, and I have. Uh, sunglasses. How about uh, would that would that do it for you? Are you kidding us? That <laughs> yes. would be wonderful. Put them on. I think is we'll that, wear. That, how, that's that's eighties for you. you we'll wait. Are going to be the Terminator. Yes, you'll be bought because right. you're about to go put them All on. Right, so you're so you're gonna basically pause the recording now. That's right. And, and then you'll fade it back in with my. Once okay. you, that's a yes. That's right. So this was all I had. All right. <laughs> well, you look like a hot Detroit Terminator to me. Oh, mm-hmm. but but can I tell you all this though? I did bring a prop for y'all. What? <laughs> whoa! 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 whoa you're in trouble like you. You're a troubled youth from an eight. I'm in a Harlem alley That's in the right. 70s. 
Yeah, yeah. You're a troubled youth taking my ten dollars. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is that's me. bro. <laughs> I love it so much, bro. <laughs> hey, you're every I, bad guy. If I would, if in, I would, eighties movie, if, everyone. It, it, I was playing jazz. It came up in my. Yes. <laughs> All right. So can we can we get started? Let's get started. Let's pick a movie right. symbol that we will use for this podcast. I only got okay? one, by the way. Go ahead, Janelle. Bro, do you want to kick us off? No, go ahead. You okay. know, we always start with you. That's what we do. I, we can, get, I, we, I have one. We start with very introspective symbols. <laughs> well, I have one, but it was it's actually the one that was offered up in the movie as a symbol for the theme of the movie. So, you know, it is one of those times where the movie's giving us exactly what we need. And I am proposing that we use as a voting symbol the empty fortune cookie. In the movie, the empty fortune cookie, um, the He's guru. Back, right? He's back. I didn't the guru, guru, not expecting that at all. The guru gives <laughs> the empty fortune cookie to Leroy. And he says, everything you need to know is in this fortune cookie. Leroy crunches the fortune cookie. And guess what? It's empty. There's nothing in there. Why? Because he, he doesn't need any additional information. Everything he needs is inside of him. And that is a perfect symbol for this movie because as a viewer, you know from the first five minutes of the movie that he, he has reached the final level. We know it. We see it. But it takes the, the entire movie for him to realize that he, he has made it to the final level. And so I think that fortune cookie that you have everything you need already simple sums it up. That's and my recommendation. That was, and, and I think that was the most Janiah symbol that we had in a long time. <laughs> Just like everything I so, have, within, everything I need, I already have within. Is that, is that, the, is that oh. the only one or is there another? That's it. That's it. Brittany, did you think of one last minute yet? So I was thinking of fortune cookie. Then I was like, well, maybe Bruce Leroy himself, then glowing. And then I was like, I don't know. That's Listen, it, Brittany, really. Brittany, oh, a dragon. Brittany, Brittany, no, no, no. A dragon bat. Brittany, there are no dragons. Struck, Brittany, I don't know where your brain was going with this fortune cookie stuff, but... You struck gold on the second one. I don't see how it could be anything other than time act. I it got to be three time acts. That you're, is, you're using the main character of the movie yes, as the symbol because you're a because box. he and that movie are one of the same. He represents that movie. Mm-hmm. The movie has the cult following. People will go to Comic Con to hear from him mm-hmm. because, and look, I love Time Out. I think he should have been a huge star after that movie. I don't understand why he's not. He was good, not just in the fighting scenes and everything. He did good acting, but I, I don't. I, I've never, I've never researched it, but I don't know why it didn't kick off after yeah. that. But. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is unfortunately, that's what people associate him with. And he loves it. Like, if you see him talk about it, he's all good. You know, it's, totally. just, it's, a, it's a positive thing. And so I'm thinking in this context, he's so tied in with that. Because I'm trying to, th- like, he I'm is, just trying he to. He the last dragon. That's what you're saying, bro. Listen, that, that's it. Man, that, just that glowing orb of him, and he's going like this. Yeah, that's because that's what I was thinking. I was thinking time max silhouette. Like that's yes. I also I, I can I can get with it. I can get with it, bro. Now if I you like want, I need, silhouette while he's eating a fortune cookie, I understand. Brittany. Let this good. be the last the podcast good. where you just mush all of the simple proposals this together. This is the last, so we are not doing that. <laughs> you, you said you want me to do it every podcast? No, you already do it every podcast. We want you to stop. You want me to continue? We don't. I love it. 
Please stop. Love it every time yeah. I do. It. Don't do it anymore. I just do it some you, more. <laughs> I just want you to know, I submitted my paperwork and I'm getting. <laughs> From, so we don't give severance packages from this podcast. I'll let you all know. <laughs> I'm going to get you're two normal this. sisters. You're in this. Mm-mm. Once you're in, you're in. You're who in. Are, yeah. Who aren't able to dress up like a separate decade from 30 <laughs> years ago <laughs> on 15 seconds notice. <laughs> all right. So can we agree on that? Well, let's can go we? with it. So uh, if the, the movie at the end, this movie will, at the end of this podcast, this movie will give zero one, two, or three Ty Mac. Ty Mocks. Ty Mock silhouettes. Glowing silhouettes. Ty Mock glowing silhouettes. And it must get three. Listen, no, it, listen. Three, just say three Ty Mocks, okay? okay? But on the screen, throw because I'm sure it'll be easy to find. Yes. So on the screen, I know we don't normally do this, but just throw it up real quick. Okay. A glowing. Because I have them posing. Time out. And they'll have one with him glow. So just, but it's three time marks. Three time marks. And, and, we, and there must be three in order for this, for, for, for The Last Dragon to be considered a classic from the right perspective. And let me let you all know this, okay? Uh, he's got my time mark already. So I know I'm not supposed, Janai is very strict. Janai is very, she wants to make sure that we unfold. I'm letting you know that it's already got one vote. We So the votes that we're looking for are your two votes. That's but what bro, we're discussing. You don't know what's going to come out of this discussion that well, could you, move your needle. Let me let you know this. I just this. think it's a little presumptive of you. Let me let you know this. There ain't that much discussion in the world. Okay, I'm going to just let you know that. From right at the beginning. And I looked at, I looked up The Last Dragon, huh? On uh, and this is this is why this if you I mean, think that he needs okay? to the synopsis, send it to him. This, I, <laughs> no, I'm not the, I'm not, I'm I want I want I you know I like watching Janaya as you do. <laughs> do and plus I'll be I'll be too emotional. But what when I what I'm saying help. is, is I went on Rotten Tomatoes, uh-huh. okay? And first of all, the critic score is 59. I don't even want to talk about that. The audience score is only 86%, which means there are 14% of people who have a negative view of The Last Dragon. So... In protest to these 14%, I'm letting you know where I stand. Okay? You want to teach now, them a valuable I, lesson. I am curious to see how you all pan out on this, but I'm just, I don't want to front. Like, I don't know what I'm doing at the end of this. Okay. So, you know, I just felt a real did. moment of me being transparent. <laughs> I feel like I celebrate, I, like I celebrate I your it. transparency. Yes, I appreciate mm-hmm. everyone's piece of that. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. celebrate it. I celebrate it. And I, I I appreciate when we all find our ways to bring our own unique approaches into the podcast. Even I, if it's, I told you even about if doing breaking, your corporate. Even if it's breaking you our central formula, edition. which is building toward right. look, 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 look. a vote. You're not going to be using this I'm all for language it. to denigrate me, Okay. I know I haven't worked in corporate for a long time, but I know the language still. You're not fooling anybody, buddy. Listen. Well. Life is jazz. It is. It is. And you know what? That's a great segue into what? The recap. Okay. Now, if you are new to our podcast, you should know we do a spoiler-filled recap because our content is from quite a while ago, generally. So. Spoilers everywhere. Okay. Bye. All right. So, and then there are some people who, who haven't seen the movie, but still want to enjoy the podcast. So we do a thorough recap. Okay. All right. Let's hop in. Let's get it. The Last Dragon takes place in New York City in the 80s. A young martial arts instructor named Leroy Green, played by Aubrey's favorite person who? Time Mark. Time Mark. 
he has been training tirelessly to attain the same level of mastery as his idol, Bruce Lee. The guru that has been training Leroy feels Leroy has made it to that level already, but Leroy doesn't believe it. And why doesn't he believe it? Because he doesn't have the glow. Okay. The glow is the final level. It is when the spirit takes over for the mind and guides the body without thought. Okay. Now we all saw it happen right at the top of the movie. Okay. Because Leroy catches an arrow as a part of a practice exercise with his martial arts teacher. And he doesn't even know how he did it, but still Leroy doesn't believe that he has reached the final level. Mm. So his martial arts teacher gives Leroy a special amulet and he sends him on a quest to take it as an offering to a potential new master, Sum Dung Goy, supposedly the wisest man in the world that also happens to live in New York. Uh, the teacher also kind of tells Leroy to stop being so pressed, okay? Because Leroy imitates everything that he has seen done in Bruce Lee films, including yes. the way he dresses, all right? He's so focused on martial arts, he doesn't even date, okay? Leroy accepts his mission. And whenever he has time, he is asking around Chinatown, trying to hunt down this new master. Meanwhile, while Leroy is looking for some dumb goy, somebody is looking for Leroy. Who? I'm glad you asked. He is the meanest, prettiest, baddest, low-down mofo around town. Show enough. The show enough. of Harlem. Show enough. Show enough. <laughs> He wants to fight Leroy to prove that he is the better fighter and that he's the master. And guess what? Leroy doesn't care, okay? He pretty much ignores Show Enough when he keeps challenging him to fight. Leroy has no interest in fighting for glory and attention. He only fights when needed, like when he sees a woman being kidnapped on the street. He saves her, okay? Now, it turns out that this woman is a famous singer and TV DJ, Lauren Charles, played by Vanity. And Leroy has to save her multiple times because her life is being threatened by a shady lowlife, Eddie Arcadian, played by Christopher Murney, who <clears> wants <throat> Lauren to promote his musical act on her show, aka his girlfriend, Angela, played by Faith Prince. Lauren refuses to bow down because she is not going to be under anybody's thumb, Eddie Arcadian. Right. Nice That's try. Right. Okay. Well, then again, she might actually want to be under Leroy's thumb. Okay. Because <laughs> she is feeling him. Okay. She <laughs> yeah. loves the way he keeps swooping in all the you time. You like a master to me. <laughs> She's picking up what he's dropping. She <laughs> loves the way he just keeps swooping in, saving her every time she gets kidnapped. Up. She, she gets kidnapped every five minutes. Okay, man, that's now, a bad she's day. Kidnapped a lot. She yeah, she's kidnapped kidnapped a, a lot. It's a bad day, Vanity. <laughs> Leroy likes her too, but he has no experience with women. Plus, he's very busy with his mission to find his new master. And on top of that, Show Nuff has started terrorizing Leroy's family and martial mm. arts students, and all of this in an effort to kind of goad Leroy into fighting him. And if that wasn't enough, Arcadian is now after Leroy too. He knows that he has to take Leroy down in order to get to Lauren Charles. Eventually, Arcadian teams up with Show Enough, okay, to take Leroy down. Arcadian manipulates Leroy into a dark warehouse by guess what? Kidnapping Lauren for a third time and the fight is on, okay? At first, mm -hmm. Leroy is holding his own, but then Show Enough gets the upper hand and guess what? He keeps it. OK, he has essentially beat Leroy physically and is now trying to break him mentally by dunking his head in water over and over again and asking Leroy, who is the master? Who is the master? Janiyah, I feel it necessary for you to talk about that he got the hand glow at this point. Who's shown up? Yes, because that's a very important. Do it, bro. That's very important. Show enough got the hand glow. Mm -hmm. See, which a top fighter can achieve mm -hmm. the hand glow, right? Mm -hmm. And he was beating Leroy down with that, mm -hmm. but he didn't have the full body glow. He did not. Yeah. He so did not. Go ahead. But it was enough. It was enough because you take Show that's Enough's right. hand glow. That's right. And you combine it with Leroy's lack of confidence. Oh. Okay. And that is why 
he is prevailing over mm. Leroy. That's right. All right. That's right. And it's like physically, Leroy, he's almost thrown in the towel pretty much. He's right. not fighting anymore. That's right. He's just letting Shonuff dunk his head in water over and over again. And, and Shonuff is like, who's the master? Who's the master? He just wants Leroy to just, to just crown him the king. But while he's doing this dunking of Leroy's head, Leroy's life is flashing before his eyes, including mm-hmm. an incident earlier that day when he thought he had finally found some dumb goy, only to discover that he wasn't even real, okay? Leroy's guru had sent him on a wild goose chase in an effort to help Leroy learn that he didn't really need a master anymore because mm. he was mm. the master, okay? Mm. Finally, it sinks in. Mm. Leroy has reached the final level. The and the level? next time that Shonuff dunks his head in the water and then asks who was the master, Leroy replies, I am. And he starts to glow. And it is not just his hand. Okay? It is the full body glow. And yes. Leroy goes on to kick Shonuff's butt. Okay? And then when Arcadian tries to shoot Leroy in a final attempt to get his way, Leroy catches the bullet in his teeth. Okay, you can't do that with the hand glow. You got to have the full body glow to catch the bullet in your teeth. Okay, and then and then Leroy essentially ties up Arcadian and leaves him there so the police can retrieve him. Leroy saves his boo Lauren. He avenges his family and he accepts his destiny as a kung fu master. The Mm. end. And then they dance to the beat of the rhythm. Rhythm. Of the, of the night. Thank you, sis. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I just feel like I watched it again. I just feel like I watched it again. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. So Thanks, good. y'all. Thanks, y'all. And there's so much left out in terms of that's the main highlights, but there were other wonderful little through line stories happening. You know, we learned about Leroy's family. You know, they had yes. colorful storylines. There were characters in Lauren's life that had interesting storylines. Interesting storylines and even the sub the subplots of the bad guys' lives. You yes. know. So there were the, that that is the main overview, but there were a lot of sub stories, you know. And bro, I feel like you got to kick off the discussion since you've already let everybody know <laughs> how you well, feel. Well, first of all, let me take a sip. Of water. Of my Everybody. ice cold water. <laughs> it sounded like you were about to and start a rap, an 80s let, rap. <laughs> let me take a sip. Listen, <laughs> I'll bust one for you. Now, <laughs> I fully know that this is a conversation that I am geared up to monopolize. And I was thinking to myself, how? Because my emotional attachment to this movie is not going to allow me to real time monitor myself um, to be able to allow. This is a group effort. But I can see myself running off. So what I did is I did something I haven't done in a long time. I actually took notes. And the title of these notes are Reasons the Last Dragon is Completely Awesome in every way. Okay? And I figured if I had these bullets, as long as I could keep myself on the bullets, right, I could just do a reasonable amount of this conversation. You know what? I really want to take some time to just really acknowledge uh, the fact that you acknowledged your weakness. And in acknowledging your weakness, you step. made sure to uh, make a mechanism yes. to help you be the best that's version right. That's right. of yourself. Mm-hmm. And thank you. Mm-hmm. That's right. Thank you. Oh, I, first of all, this movie, let me just say in general, I love the feel of this movie. There was one objective of this movie, entertain you for the time you're watching this movie. That's it. Like, it, this was a time before anybody had to worry about messages or politics or whatever. 
And it's so funny because in that, they represented so much. Like even when you had the transgender person in the um uh, in the uh the uh theater, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like there, there wasn't no deal made about it. It was just this is the community, yo. There's all different kind of people so in this many. in this community. And I'm just saying when you, when I, when you're watching it, it's just a feel good, entertaining movie through the entire time it's a clear movie it's good versus evil there's no we, and, and even the hero's journey is not him having to grapple with using his powers for the wrong reason or so his uh journey was just realizing you know in, in itself just just how powerful he was and i'm just saying Movies get so deep nowadays, and you know, but I just loved that feeling of just this is just a and bro, fun I, I don't want to disagree with you on general tone. I Go don't, ahead. I don't. Go ahead, but, disagree. But, but what you just said, I felt like, um, well, well, first of all, I want to thank you for 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 celebrating the diversity in this movie. It was this so was much. like was so they had every kind of diversity. Okay racial diversity, gender diversity. I mean, you know, a lot of movies when when you when you go to the bad guys crew, okay, it's all men. And then they might have some strumpets that are women. Okay. <laughs> Not in this movie. They have bad guys that were women and bad guys that were guys. Okay. And it was just sort of like an equivalency <laughs> in terms of like they had that's, some, that, that's, they had some that's top right. notch bad girl talk. They that, did. That's right. you want to do something, you want to <laughs> kiss my fist. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, girl, you look, are taunting him. Here's, here's yes, the, yes. Yes. I, I just love, but that's the first scene, of all, bro. That's the scene that I wanted to point out. The one Brittany just talked about, because I yes. think that is the time where Leroy um, is tempted to use his skills for a selfish reason, because they're literally making fun of him in that scene in front of his students. And didn't you see Leroy get tempted to just knock them all down? And then well, he looked, he well, saw he... his students. He remembered his vow not to use his skills for selfish reasons, And he checked himself. But, bro, he did have that struggle. Well, I, for me, and I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but uh, I'm saying the way I interpreted it. First of all, I, I just want to say that this was a time where we were observing and, you know, enjoying, you know, whatever you want to call it, diversity or whatever, but we didn't have to name it. It was just this movie we just got all, all, got all kind of people. And I just missed that time where it wasn't them doing the thing. It was just, you know, that's just how this story was best told. And bro, in that I moment, don't think that's that, the case, bro. Well, I, bro, you say, don't think that they were being intentional about crafting a a a really diverse Don't, don't know. Of, I'm just saying none of us ever thought about it. So I, 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 I'm just... Especially in saying, these films where you have a black director, okay, and and, and look, black I'm not, I'm not, black primary leads, you I know, don't know, there's don't an really, intention around race in these movies, and to well, and saying, painting a I'm world saying, that wasn't all black, that wasn't black versus white, it was it was everybody. Well, I'm just saying, I, you know, I don't know. All I know is that we didn't have to care about that, and I miss those times. So I don't know if they had all those plans and all of that. All I'm saying is, is when we walked away, we weren't like, oh, The Last Dragon has great you representation. Know, representation. We're like, that was awesome. <laughs> that's that's how we, so I'm I just saying, <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with, any, I just want you to know, I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying. I'm just glad we didn't have to care about that. And I'm glad that when I was watching it, Again, for the 400th time, I also was able to be transported <laughs> to a time where we was just, we went to the movies just because it was an awesome movie. But yeah. that being said, in that moment, he, if you notice, he didn't, he didn't guard up until she swung on it. And so that's when he was about to break into, because I believe that they started hitting on him. He wasn't going to let him keep hitting. You know, it was just, that's what it would have took. So in that moment, I don't feel like he was battling with himself more like 
oh, I'm about to, have to you know, do mm-hmm, what I do. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like it was for selfish reasons. Like, I can't let them beat me up, mm-hmm. but they're going to have to push it to that point yeah. before mm-hmm. before I engage. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I can also see it interpreted the way, you know, I, I'm just saying, for me, it was just more like, it wasn't him wrestling with it. It was like, man, these people just don't even know. Yeah. I will put so many feet oh, in their faces. Oh, they're going to get God. They're going to get God so good. And they don't even know it. <laughs> Brittany, can you give me that girl's line one more time for me? <laughs> You're going to kiss my face. <laughs> <laughs> and there were so many great oh nuggets. Oh my god! <laughs> there were so, so many great good. nuggets like that. And look, look. Here's the thing: none of the the the, the women in that uh, group they didn't look like they were particularly athletic. You know, like even when they were, but their attitude made them sound fine because they were just so confident, <laughs> very confident. <laughs> totally, totally. Listen, that was something that was in this movie hardcore is the women being normal looking women yep. who were about that life. Yeah. Listen, when show enough came into that into that pizza diner, that mom was about to Ooh. kick his Ooh. ass. She, she was, was throwing pizza dough. She was about I mean, to throw pans. The dad had to stop oh, her. Can we please talk about that family for a minute? Can yes, we talk about that yes, family? Let's talk about the family. Okay, so Leroy, it. we meet Leroy, and we, we're hanging out with him for a while before we meet his family. Okay, so we don't know what to think. And his family, it's a mom, a dad, he has a brother, he has a sister. And listen, they are a very normal family. We have met, we have met Leroy, and he's this eccentric character. <laughs> you know, he like doesn't use contractions. You know, he will say, right. you know. <laughs> I am <laughs> never. I'm, you know, and <laughs> I do not have the <laughs> exactly. And you know, walking with this posture, just being so obsessed with martial arts That's right. and this discipline. Okay, then we meet his family, and they're just a regular, fun, nice family. The little regular brother is picking family. on Leroy, saying, "Man, you weird. You weird. <laughs> <laughs> Why you talk like that? Why you dress like that? You weird." And his dad is like protecting him. You leave your brother alone. I was weird. And now right. people said I was weird because I was a black man opening up a pizza shop. <laughs> That's right. And what was his That's little right. pizza slogan again? The he motto. Directed like, your pizza to Daddy Green's <laughs> pizza. <laughs> 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 Who came up with that in the writer's room? Directed your pizza. <laughs> directed your pizza down to Daddy Green. Oh and you've already talked. I've talked about this before, but I love movies that this movie did not shy away from the fact that this was a black family, right? But this wasn't a movie about them being a black family. It could this have was been a movie, any family being like this. Th- this was a this was a movie about a kung fu master, but. They, they didn't shy away from the fact that they're black, but they didn't make that the, the focal point. And I just, I just love how you know, story. It just makes the storytelling feel very real. Just how you know, even when they're all around the uh, talking about the family, like when you have the scene where they're all eating together. Keisha um, Knight Pulliam yeah, plays the little Knight, sister. That's right. With Keisha Knight, she's and so cute, so cute. so cute, so cute, and. But them just messing with each other and stuff, it just makes, that's how it is. Like, when we're, I mean, you can think about us, you know, eating, you know what I'm saying, being in front of TV or whatever, and just not really messing with each other, but messing with each other at the same time. Yeah. And it just really makes you feel like you you were really immersed in that moment. Absolutely. Yeah. And that little brother, Richie Green, played by Leo yeah, O'Brien, hard. by the way. Oh my God! Played that part. He was Yo, such a delight. Can we talk about the acting? Because I thought the acting was good all around. You know, like like the moment when, um, when Leroy came after Shonuff busted up the the restaurant where Brittany was talking about. That mom was about, I think she oh. could have hung for at least a while. And she, she might not have won, but there was, she was going to take a couple of them. She <laughs> threw pizza dough in two of her faces. She started picking up pans. 
The husband tried to stop her. She was like, she was about to go off. And oh, I was like, gosh. I know that's right. And the look in his eye when he came in and he was just crying, but not too much. Just that, I mean, that's like Denzel Washington. You know, like, like when we when we talk about glory and he was getting, you know, whipped and he just had that tear, like that just came down, mm-hmm. like. You got to put yourself in that mental space. And even when, um, what's, what was the, uh, what's her name? Uh, the, the. Vanity? No, no, no. The, the, the girl, Eddie Arcadian's. Um, oh, Angela. The Angela, Angela character. Like when she was going off on him. Like. Oh, she that did that. She real. did that scene. That she did a real, great yeah. job. Sorry, I just wanted to say that one more thing. Well, so bro, you actually, you now. you know, you you kind of um, you mentioned Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington actually auditioned for both Leroy and Show Enough. Okay, Mario Van Peebles wow. was considered for the role of Leroy. Okay, Wesley Snipes auditioned for the role of Leroy. Okay, and wait till you hear the list of people that were considered for Show Enough. <laughs> Jim Brown, Fred Williamson, Ron O'Neill, Billy D. Williams, Carl Weathers, <laughs> all considered for the role of show enough. But listen, y'all, when oh, oh, Billy Blanks was considered for Leroy. Lawrence Fishburne wow. was considered for Leroy. Mm. And so it's like, yeah, I think the <laughs> acting was good. But when I okay, think I'm about what back. Lawrence Fishburne could have brought to that part. I'm like, mm. especially now that, now that I know him as Morpheus. I'm like, oh my gosh. Lord, Lawrence Fishburne might have killed that role dead, you know? Um, and I will also just, just in terms of like a fun little tidbit, you know. Um, oh, I've, been lo- I've been looking forward to the tidbits. <laughs> let, let, let's get some tidbits. I just, you know, it's so funny when you think about all of these, these, these black actors, you know, you know, auditioning for these two roles that we know, actors we know. Um, so Tymok, this, he was a martial artist. He was not an is, actor. Is, okay. And on the remains. flip side, Julius <laughs> Carey, who played yeah, Show Enough. Correct, correct. He is a martial artist. He is a martial Thank artist. You. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But he was not an actor at the time. And on the flip side, Julius Carey, who played Show Enough, he was an actor. He was not a martial artist. And so when you think about the, the, the casting for this, you know, they really were looking for a secret sauce. And That's in some right. cases, it took That's a right. lot of work to get the person to actually be able to convey the role. Julius Carey, there are reports that he got sick of his, his, his training, his martial arts training, okay? And Ty Mock had many acting coaches working with him. <laughs> they had multiple acting coaches to try to get him up to speed, okay? They did a good job. <laughs> so bro, you're complimenting the acting. They had to do some work to get, to get, right. him, to get him to where he was. <laughs> and they did it. And he, he obviously did it too. You know, cause, cause like, you could tell that um, what what's the guy's name who plays? I, I'm gonna just say show enough, but you Julius you could tell Carey. Julius uh, Carey, the the guy who played Candyman, right? Yeah. Um, oh. You you could tell that first of all he, he was I mean because he killed show enough. Okay, like I mean he went. All the way in. I would put him on the list for for like best bad guy ever. I thought he, I he was guy. he was he was massively was, because the bad guy. Because that's the thing about these movies is that you can't go halfway. It would be corny. Like it, 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 it's so it's so corny. You got to stick it for it to work, and that's what he did. I mean, he just embodied it. But you could tell during the fight scenes. He's athletic, but you could tell he wasn't a fighter. Mm. And you could tell, you know what I'm saying, um, Tymok is an actual fighter. So, but you could tell that they both did the work to, you know, get out of their comfort zone. What did you think of the acting, sis? I thought it was like, you know, a corny 80s movie. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I 
Uh, so, you know, I didn't think about it the way I'm like, they did do a good job. I just, I, mean, I was, I was just kind of like, this is, you know, an 80s movie. They're not looking to like get any awards for this, you know. So they're just having a good time and, you know, making movies. So I thought they did a good job, but it wasn't anything that I'd be like, oh my goodness, it was stellar. Um, so, so yeah. I, and I think about it because this movie came out when I was born. And so... <laughs> This Literally. is my first time, like in like uh, years, watching the full movie. So it was just kind of like, yeah, this is definitely an '80s movie, and I could see why this movie was fun during that time. So yeah. that that kind of, so I I thought it was you know good. And they they shot the whole film in 44 days, y'all. They shot the whole thing, and that was that a month and a half, you know. Cause, cause the thing is, is that just like Brittany, I've never really noticed it until watching it in this context. Cause like I, all the time, I'll just watch it because you know it's one of my favorite movies. But I'm just saying to Brittany's point, I feel like now that I was watching it to critique it, I was expecting for the acting to seem corny to me, but it didn't. You know what I'm saying? That's why. So I'm just saying, I feel you, man. I feel you that. Like, I, thought, if you're not- I thought Julius Carey did a, I thought that, I thought show enough to me, that was really stellar acting. I felt like he was fully in that character. I thought that the rest of them, I just thought the rest of them were fine. You know, I thought the rest of them were okay. It's you know, so I didn't funny. think like, anybody did else was. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be laugh to hear y'all say that because I'm just well, like, she, Janai, I agree with you. She said they're funny. No, no, I just thought that that was, I thought it was just funny. Like, even hear you say that he was like so good. And I, I thought like, Show Enough was so oh, good, was, though. Uh, I, I thought he oh did a great God. job, but I was just like, I mean, in my head, I'm just like, he was, you know, I thought <laughs> that he was having a good time. Like, like he was like, you know, like he could shut it on, like in my mind, like, on that set, he could shut it on and off because it's like you go into it and you're being this big mean guy and you're doing things like coming in the middle of a movie and like <laughs> disturbing the peace. <laughs> you're breaking tables at a pizza shop. It's like so I, I, <laughs> with such a meanie pants. He exactly. I was like, you're being mean it was for, no reason. for no reason. <laughs> Just walking around being a tyrant, just just me for no reason. Just what's wrong with you? What is yeah, oh, no Lauren though, sis? Lauren, huh? Lauren, the character played by Vanity. What did you yes. think of her? Oh, I thought she was. I thought she was so beautiful. I loved how she um, did not. It wasn't like oh, we're taking her out of this car. She was like, this is not the way. What, who are you? And <laughs> when she saw that something was a ride, she did. She fought back. She hit with a purse. She hit with her fist. She was like, if y'all going to take me, y'all not taking me quietly. Everybody's going to know. She was screaming, help. I was like, I said, I know that's right, Vanity. Because Vanity was like, well, I'm going to die. I'm going to die loud. <laughs> so was, and even like, when they had kidnapped her and he was like, you're going to play my girlfriend's video. She was like, no, I'm not. She was literally kidding. Right she there. had no way. She was tied to a chair. She had no way to get away. And she was still standing her ground. She was there. I'm just going to die. Because <laughs> see, um, I'm not playing this. This this video is horrible. And then even watching her, though, it was kind of funny. And this is the part where I was just like, oh, this is like a, a cool 80s movie. Because when she was singing, I was like, this is that 80s sound. I was like, just so yeah, like, you know, there's, you know sound, but then there's not. Like, it's something happening there. And it's like... You but know, I love that's, what you know, that's what you know I was talking about. She said, you know, she was listening to Vanity Six and they can't sing like that. I'm like, it wasn't about singing. It was about making it the sure joke. Wasn't. It like, sure it was wasn't. about making the good, you know, the, if you put all the, like, if you played at the club, yeah. it's fun to dance to. <laughs> and her facial expressions that she was making when she was uh, singing, I was just like, these facial expressions are so odd but I, I was like but for some reason I get it like I it was 80s facial expressions great. Exactly. Your expression it, in the 80s 
Listen, and something I want to say is that Vanity was sexy this entire movie, but she she had all her clothes on. Yep. Vanity mm-hmm. was never inappropriate in terms of like revealing so much. And her body was just a regular woman's body. And I say that because I'm pointing out that right now, people are really in love with things that are manufactured. Mm. And just to see Vanity be naturally beautiful, hair teased out, looking a mess. I was like, I don't know why this is, <laughs> wasn't style then. That's concerning. And then I was like, but her hair teased out, had her makeup on, and her dress, and her dress maybe came up mid-thigh. Either way, even if it would have came up all the way to the top, it still was just nice. And she, she had on shiny tights. She had on shiny tights. All the time. Shiny tights. Her tights yeah. were shiny. And I was just kind of chuckling because I was just like, what she has on right now, I will wear that outside. This is cute. And so. No, I, <laughs> no, she was yeah, I, I think it, that was definitely, that must have been a choice because Vanity did some off the hook stuff. Listen. One of her famous songs was Nasty Girl. We're going to stay in, we're going to stay in positive, but I'll just let you know that, Brittany, you took my next sentence out of my mouth because Vanity was so sexy. And, like, it, to me, it's one of the all-time sexy performances. Like, I like Jasmine Guy in Harlem Nights. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to put that on the list. Oh, that that should have been on the list, but yes. Mm-hmm. But um, her, but like when she yeah, went, on there. When, when okay. Jasmine guy was smoking that cigarette off that long thing, and she's like, "It would be advantageous if you were to join our organization, Mister Quick." You know, it was just <laughs> one of those. <laughs> we moments. don't know that joke. And, well, that. you will, and, <laughs> and it's really sad. I'm you but but I'm picturing. But what I'm saying is, is when she was oh, Jasmine, her guy. two. Her two sexy moments when she was like, she was like, oh, I'll show you some moves. Yes. <laughs> when they were in the car. Oh, and, but the big one was, you look like a master to me. <laughs> Listen, that was another thing. Every time. Her flirting was not covert. That's and right. I was like, they want to take a lot of times this boldness away from women to be able to just say what you want. And she oh, wanted really? Leroy Green. Yes, yeah, she did. She thought he was cute. She wanted to say, I'll teach you something. She said it. I'll teach you something. <laughs> <laughs> she did not shy away from that. I love that. With her eyes, where he was beating the people <laughs> Oh, she was loving it. She was just looking at him like, oh, so you oh, just gonna, oh, oh. Oh, so you're just gonna kick both of them in the face. All right. Got it. <laughs> Which that is something I think that is Aubrey really helped me because of course you all know I text Aubrey and Janiah as I'm watching the movies. Uh because Which I know awesome. they love that. So fun. And so, Which and even awesome. if they don't, I will continue to do it. And so <laughs> Well, like I said, I have an archive of, the, of both of you all watching Game of Thrones. I'll release that <laughs> as, at some point one day. I'll post those. So at one point, I had messaged them. I said, now, why they got Leroy in this yellow onesie? What's going on here? <laughs> and Aubrey texts me back like that as a call to Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. It texts me a pitch and texts us a picture of in our, our sibling chat of Bruce Lee in the exact same yellow onesie. And so I thought that that was cool. The other part that I was able to then see my understand myself was when he was inside the studio, Leroy Green, and all of the bad guys were surrounding him. And he was just beating them up in a circle and just, you know, going and knocking them all out. And they were all being knocked out. And I, this is why I was like, oh, this is just a corny 80s movie because you could clearly see at some points he was not making contact with them, but they were still flying. And I just thought it was hilarious. It was like, oh, and then you're like across the room. And I was like, that is, this is, I love this. That's the glow. (laughs) That's before you you knew he had the glow. Can I tell you something, Brittany? You right. right. When those kids come into that theater, yes. okay, I am mentally in 1985. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Yeah. It's, 
I don't care that the fighting is corny. I don't care that they got None of it. this that because that guy in um what's his name? The one who uh plays um the brother, the, the uh the small one. The oh, small the Asian. Kid. no, no, the small Asian kid. Oh, let me see. I'll see if I can find but his he, name. He he's so up, good. He's a he's a you know, he's still a stunt person. Like mm-hmm. he's oh, okay. he's got a great fight scene with the rock in this movie. The Rundown, which is a movie I thought was good, but but didn't get any traction. But yeah, uh, anyway, but but they do. This I think fight it's because The Rock puts out seventeen movies a year. But that, he wasn't back then. He doesn't get it. He, he wasn't. That was back when he was getting started. Anyway, it's not yeah. a classic by any stretch. Yeah. But it, but I would. Be, I remember might, it though. I might be curious to discuss Ernie that Reyes Junior. Yes, Ernie Reyes. And so he's a real martial artist. Yeah. And like you can see. He was so good as a little boy. He did, but he's he was in a bunch of movies at that time. You I know what remember. I'm I remember seeing him. So like he was always, always, but like, yo, when he when he squares up with that dude, he's like, you want to fight me? <laughs> you know? And the funny thing is, is like, it's this grown man, like. I thought, you know, you want to fight me, little kid? But even the way they had him do it, they made it kind of plausible. Because he just headbutted the dude in his crotch. And if totally, you're like, totally if you're a man, so weird. you know that that's... That you're done. You're done and he bent over and caught a foot to the face. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? All, all, of the, all of the martial arts scenes... They made me realize that I was surely missing something because I have not seen any Bruce Lee movies. And so I know that there were things that were paying homage to Bruce Lee. I mean, obviously, they named him repeatedly. Can we do Enter the Dragon next? Enter the Dragon? Let, let's do Enter the Dragon let's next. Just, yes. be, just, just to continue the conversation. I love that. I love that because the whole time I was like, I wish that I could celebrate the Bruce Lee aspects of this and oh just at that time. I can't wait. I can't wait for you to watch. I can't wait. For you I to think watch. about well, something else I text Aubrey and Janai was that I love the fact that there was a time where people were in love with martial arts and with Bruce Lee because it was people fighting with their fists and it was teaching children that it's mind power over just the power of your fist. And so I just love that we're not talking about weapons. We're talking about the what you can do with your own physical body. And of course, there were nunchucks and things like that that came into play. Uh, but I just well, you I know what? Here's, here's the part. thing, though. Here's the thing. It, for, it still furthers your point in the sense that nunchucks take if you're using a, that kind of weapon, it takes a discipline. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it oh, takes yeah. a discipline. Like any person Not who can pull a trigger, stuff in the face. Yeah, any <laughs> person can pull a trigger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, I'm just it's saying, it's still, even if you're talking about learning how to use, that's true. A, a weapon is still a discipline, as opposed to, you know. And it's funny because, I mean, martial arts has, you know, gotten bigger and bigger. You know, back then, um, it was all about Bruce Lee and people you know, thinking that you could actually do that. But then, and people, a lot of people started taking karate. I even was in Kung Fu classes back then because of that. And then like, as the nineties came, what came from that was you start hearing about mixed martial arts. And that's, you know, when people started actually figuring out all these different um, styles. But the point I'm trying to make is Bruce Lee in a lot of ways kind of was one of the first ones to do that because yeah. because Bruce Lee um came out with something called Jeet Kune Do. That's it, the the style of fighting that he came out with. And the whole philosophy behind this style was not being a style. It was like being water so you can move and flow mm. in whatever you need to do. Mm. So I'm saying when that's going through all the movies and they're coming out and things like mixed martial arts, because now it's not just about one thing. It's like, if you yeah. see an MMA fight, they'll talk about all the stuff that they know, you know, and I'm just saying Bruce Lee was one of the first actual mixed martial artists. It's just wow. interesting to see him reverberate out because like, look, if you were a kid in the, uh, in the eighties, you understood Bruce Leroy's obsession 
with Bruce Lee. Totally, totally, yeah. totally. And we and, have to make sure in that one scene to talk about the little brother. He didn't he didn't know martial arts, honey, but he knew break dance. And he got about them ropes. Oh my god. He was like, and I was like yeah. played by Leo O'Brien. <laughs> he did a little For break dance. He was tied up by, by the Arcadian and, and the bad guys. And he did a little break dance oh to get out of his to get, oh get out of the ropes. God. He so took his break dance his shoes off. I was like, okay. <laughs> but to me, so it was cute. a real tribute to the era. You know, like there, and, and when you even when you you it, it was the costumes and it was the moment that they were bringing to life, but there were certain things in there that were just paying so much respect to the time, and I thought that break dancing was one of those things where it's like, in case you didn't know, this is an '80s movie. You know, <laughs> I just love that. So good. I mean, it was. So and can I just say, this is one of the things to me that makes this movie technically good. Because every setup had a payoff. So, like, in the beginning, it was the belt buckle. We didn't know it was a belt buckle. That's a whole journey. In the beginning, you see when he first, when Bruce Leroy first saw show enough in the movie theater, he said, catch his bull. I heard he could catch bulls with his teeth. Catch his bullets with his teeth. You know, that was a little <laughs> set up for the... Um, for the end of the movie, but even him being the, the little brother being a dancer, that you know, because they set that up. He was a dancer, and like he was showing how he was so into doing all these moves, and that paid off when he was, you know, caught up and he had to dance himself out the ropes. It was like everything made sense. Like all, all everything in the movie just flowed together yeah. and made sense. So from a writing perspective. It was just tight because yeah. in this universe, it all made sense. It did. For some reason, people walk around in, in, in costumes and fight kung fu. But in this universe. Listen, why are all of you and your little friends walking around in the same outfit? Oh my what God. What is happening it's here? It's called a dance crew, Brad. No, you are, you are correct. My Get apologies. it together. Get we it have together. plenty of them in New York and they live in the subway. <laughs> you guys got some homework, okay? Which I know Janai is very excited about. Yes. But Brittany, I want you to do some homework as well. Me I already Brittany, looked up the Lindy Hop. Me and Brittany, me and Brittany, and you did good with that one. You haven't given <laughs> very you, old homework. Me and Brittany, me and Brittany weren't as into homework as Janai. But you know, hey, listen, we we because I, I had to. We, we eventually graduated <laughs> as well. But look, so anyway, so <laughs> here's here's I want you guys to look up. Bruce Lee versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Guess what? I did it already. Yes. Because I watched this with James. That sounds about right. <laughs> My boyfriend James had me look that up. What a delight. Okay, this is yes. fun homework for us to talk yes. about. It's such, it's such a, when we it's so when good. we recap The Last Dragon. I mean, not the last, which one did you say, bro? Into the... Enter the dragon. Enter the dragon. Yes. Well, we, okay, this is good. Oh, I love some homework. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile. And, and, but, but and it's, it's, do it's, 10 minutes before we It's the movie that brought, brought that iconic, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. But, but can we also talk about the music, you know? And um, let us talk about it. Let us talk about it because it's another thing that, well, first of all, Barry, this is Barry Gordy's movie. So it was Motown. Okay. What are we going to do here? (laughs) But the truth is, Motown was the sound of the time, you know? And so even if the movie had not been done by Motown, it would have needed to have Motown in it to serve, to tell the story of that time. You know, and there were so many songs that were written for the movie. I mean, the the title song, The Last Dragon. Okay, they had a a song called The Glow. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You just have to stop there for one second. The Last Dragon. By Dwight David. Performed by Dwight David. Written by by Bruce Miller and Norman Whitfield. It gives me the same feeling as the Rocky theme. Like, (laughs) when I... Good. When they start bringing that song in... When he is fighting and like the music that they're playing with the fight, the 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 you know the the end of the movie fight scene between showed up 
And they just build up the tension to that fight scene so perfectly. Yes. And then they get that music just coming in. Oh, it gets me every And I have time. to share some of the lyrics. I have to share it. I have to share some. Um, this is uh, two of my favorite parts. It's time to leave my nest where you were born. This journey you must make alone. Spread your wings and fly. There's a power deep inside you, an inner strength. You'll find in time of need, the glow. Okay, <laughs> the journey now before you is in the final test. You've learned your lesson well. I can teach you no more. There's a power deep inside you, an inner strength you'll find mm. in time of need. The glow. You are the last dragon. You possess the power of the glow. You are the last dragon. You possess the power of the glow. And they just keep saying it. <laughs> somehow, somehow, I'm staying in the seat yes. instead of running out this place right now, which is what I want to do. Run out and I'm coming. <laughs> and you, you know, know what? This is the first time in a long time that I did uh pay attention to the music and enjoy it. Um, because normally I forget it. But it's like this time, I think it was because I knew it was Barry Gordy's movie sure. that it made me pay attention. I was like, oh, there's about to be some good stuff in here. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like, this is a movie for everybody. There is musical performances. So true. So there's, true dancing, there's family. There's action. You know, there's, you know, the, the Hallmark moments. It's just. Yes, it does. It, it got everything. everything. And even those moments, Britt, those moments weren't even corny like they're still not corny to me like like when when he's trying to say can you show me some moves at the end can you show me some moves and then they cut it off can you show me some moves you know and it's yeah, like yeah, it that's so not far. it's just perfect it was just right but okay. i can't can it's corny I, because he's corny not because the movie was that because it was yes. poorly done yes yeah yes and the music itself was integrated so well. It was. So like, I, I mean, have you to agree. they played a whole The Barge video, but like, it didn't feel like it. It didn't feel like, you remember when we were watching the awful Last Matrix and- <sighs> How do you really feel? Mood. But look, but you know how, when they were showing the clips of the original Matrix, how it would just affect the whole flow of the movie. Like, it just felt like you're just- you know, shoot You're copy and, and pasting right now. You are copy and pasting right now. That's plagiarism in, in college. <laughs> but the way they did it, they Stop integrated it. it, it says you, you know what I mean? Do it. Like they just let it flow. <laughs> like even in the movie, and Brittany, it's interesting because you were born that year. So you got a real snapshot of what it was like, you know, the year you were born. Because the music, what, I would what have was been a, great in the eighties and nineties. What was her name song that she was singing when she was? Uh, oh, Seventh Heaven. No, 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 no. That's seven, not not Seventh Heaven. The club. What was the name of the song Eddie Arcadia's girl was singing? Oh, oh when she was talking about like um, a sign, a, a box, <laughs> and she was dressed up like a stoplight. Oh, what was her name? What was her name? <laughs> What was her name? The la- what was the name of the movie? The last Angela. Angela. Angela right? Varaco. Angela. Okay, let me see. When she was popping up behind them in that purple laundry and her <laughs> a lingerie in that music video, I was like, and hey, the first music video, it happening. was something like it was something <laughs> like run. dirty Test books. Yes, I found run. your dirty <laughs> books. I <laughs> found your dirty books. <laughs> 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 and then the parts where she was just jamming to the music, where she was like. like you know like it it, it was so 80s it was so it was it was because her character it was based off of cindy lopper was inspired by cindy lopper and um and that came that makes sense that makes sense it comes in very clearly and i will just say faith prince is one of those people that has been in so many things Mm -hmm. Been in so many things. And, um, you know, I will just say, I thought she brought so much to, to that, to that role. You know, I thought like she brought so much heart and depth 
into that character. It's one of those characters that um, could have been a throwaway in terms of casting because all she really needed to do was to be like a sexy, you know, a sexy girlfriend, you know, <laughs> that, um, that, that, that fell out of love with her boyfriend when he went too far to the dark side. So that could have been a throwaway casting, but they really did a great job because she, she made that character someone you actually, you, 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 you felt, you felt with her, you know, you watched her being um, really uh, disappointed in the way that Eddie Arcadian was evolving. We watched and understood that she was seeing something in him she hadn't seen before. We watched her become afraid of him and disgusted by him. And we were, we, we, we felt her triumph when she got her courage together and went back to Queens, to Kew Gardens, you know? That's right. And he was like, you're just, you know, a nobody from, you're from Kew Gardens. And she was like, you're from Kew Gardens too. Totally. I know, I know, I know <laughs> we already said it, but she nailed that scene. Man. She, did. she did. She did do a great job. She did. She definitely did. Now that part, I will, I will say I, that was, I, I mean, if I had to like quantify, like not corny eighties acting, she did do a great job. Because that's the thing, like in a corny eighties movie, when it's time to act, Sometimes they, they don't show, they don't show up. But sometimes, like you said, they do. You know what I mean? Yeah, like sometimes they up. don't, but sometimes well, they do. Sometimes <laughs> they do. Every I thought it was fun to watching them. Their little, the little parts that were still kind of funny to me. Like whenever the three boys they were waiting to see um, Lauren because you know the younger brother was in love with Lauren and that is going to be his woman and so he took him and his Get your friends hands off my woman <laughs> Aww. And they were going to like go and basically support him uh, for getting with Lauren because he was going to be there. And so, but there was this part where they heard the music playing inside because Lauren was already inside with Leroy. And so they're going around the back to sneak in. And it was funny just watching their little friend, him not be able to hop up on the top of that thing. Yeah, and so yeah. they had to like pull him up. <laughs> so yeah, and he was always saying, wait up guys. And I was just <laughs> so laughing cute. because so, I remember yes. as a kid, um, there was this one time everyone was hopping the gate and uh, uh-huh. I went and knocked on the person's door and said, can I just come down those stairs and I'll meet them in the backyard because <laughs> I couldn't have a gate. And so it just made Did they me let you? Did they let you? Did oh, they yeah. say, get away, scallywag? Get, 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 get out of here. No. They said, she, I did. I said, well, I'm going to go oh, <laughs> into the house. I'll meet you all back there. Um, and so it just, when I saw him, I was like, this is so real. I was like, I don't know if this was written in, like struggled to hop on top of this thing, or if that was just like, all y'all get up. And it's like, he's, he's not going to be able to do it. He's not going to be able to do it. Yeah. And so I do, I love when movies have those little parts in a movie that just make you feel like there's a video camera walking around the, with these regular people in their regular life. And they just yeah. don't, you're just there. Yeah. Like you're just there watching it. So and even to that, the younger brother's character, for, for whatever reason, I wish they could have explained that. But Keisha and I, Pulliam's character as a little sister, she had two different names. And so it, <laughs> it, and so the little boy, and this is when you have a child that's like, has a smart mouth as a parent, but you're like not always correcting them because it's just like, that's just them. And so he says, that's what's, that's what's wrong with her now. <laughs> She's confused. You don't know her name. <laughs> he was the perfect. That was oh, perfect. So good. So good. I mean, he was like when the I think about so what eighties acting was. Like to me, it's that little boy. Yeah, <laughs> that to me. He did such because his neither one of his parents were just like, well, let me take that back. His mom was like that when they when she's about to protect that piece of shop of her family, she was like, I'm not playing with y'all. That I'm throwing family, them. That I'm family felt so real to me, <laughs> they though. They felt so real. I they love felt them. so real. Really so real. Love them. They were like, leave your brother alone. He's just coming down from the roof where he's made a, <laughs> a makeshift <laughs> garden <laughs> to do his martial arts stretching. Leave him alone. You know? <laughs> and then they, they were, were so, so supportive. happy they were so supportive they were so happy though like secretly when they saw him liking uh the Lauren character they were like 
<laughs> they just started smelling at each other like, yeah. take him to meet her. Please. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Oh, and I y'all, I had um, I had one more little interesting factoid just on the on the piece of, about the visuals, and it was the DJ set of um the show Seventh Heaven, that club, that stage area, mm-hmm. because to me that also looked very eighties. Yeah. You know, there was something yeah. about it that just very so, bandstand. Very yes, it really club captured 54, the time. Yeah. And um, I was wondering where, you know, like what, what was the what was the store behind that set? And it turns out that it was custom built video equipment. They used about a million dollars worth of video equipment. They had three professional Sodi beta cam pl- beta cam players, and it was the only three of their kind in the world. And they were especially developed for the movie. And wow. so they had to modify the transmission of the video in order to accommodate the filming of the video sections in the film. It was just like, it was one of those things where it, 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 to me, it was just, it was like the little boy doing the, um, doing the break dance, get out of the ropes. You know, there was just so much attention I thought to bringing that, that club scene to life. And I appreciate that it was the whole budget was $10 million. And so they use one tenth of the budget on mm. just the video equipment for that scene. Wow. That is how much work they put in to bring that to bring that to life. It paid off. Here we yeah. are in 2022 talking about it. Yeah, totally. It paid off. When I saw that floor there, I was like, man, I want this floor in my basement. <laughs> on a floor like this in the basement. Oh, God. This is fantastic. See through the floor. And you know what, y'all? If I if somebody just said design Britney's perfect house. I would put a music video sa- stage area in it. I'm not surprised to hear you say that, sis. It sounds right. Listen, it well, you guys right. both can use storage for your oh, 80s yeah. costumes. <laughs> right next to your 90s costumes. <laughs> hey, bro, wait. I have you something else. You mean regular clothing that I wear all the time? I'm sorry. People like sequins. This is a top notch. <laughs> this is a top notch jacket. I'm I have no shame. regrets. I have no regrets. <laughs> Bro, when I was watching this, in the same way that I was like, man, I don't really know Bruce Lee, I also thought about the Karate Kid. And I was wondering which came first, Karate Kid or this movie? And so, okay, and bro, you're right. Because photography for Karate Kid started in October 31st, 1983. Mm -hmm. And filming for this movie started April 16th, 1984. But I just want to say they were both in the hopper at the same time. Oh, you see, yeah. they started <laughs> filming pretty much just a couple, like half a year apart from each other. I so mean, they were both, it, it was that time. It's funny because I'm I'm actually watching or trying to watch Cobra Kai right now. I, I don't know if you all I've know heard about great things about it. I'm neither of Well, anyway, basically, Karate <laughs> Kid was like, a big part you, of I somebody think I put that on the list who was, who was list. seven. Oh yeah. The first one, definitely. Um, but there ended up being like four movies. Yeah. It was karate yeah. kid one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. And then the next karate kid. And then they did the one with Jaden Smith and, um, and Cobra Kai is based off of those two main characters from the first movie as adults. And they both, you know, it's Daniel Russo and the, other guy, I forget, forget his name, but anyway. So, I heard it's good though, bro. Yes, it, it, it's it's definitely interesting. Like it's, like it's, it's, def- it's respectful of. I'm. It's very the much, and I'm. I'm only. I, I haven't watched enough to form an opinion. But yeah. the point I'm trying to make is, is that those were very. See, it was coming out of like you know Bruce Lee the seventies, like those movies, and then Karate Kid and, and the Last Dragon was like, you know, everybody would have dressed up like Karate Kid, and, you know what I mean? Like, and all that stuff. So it was just a perfect time for those kind of, those kind of movies, man. Yeah. And I'm just saying, I remember it vividly because Karate Kid was one of the things that made you excited about a movie like The Last Dragon. Sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because, yeah. and that was another movie that, you know, like you said, that should definitely be on the list. Yeah, I, I feel like I have seen those, but they got to be on the list. Yeah, the first one. 
the first one. Okay. Uh, again, yeah. Aubrey's already put his perspective out there. Clearly. <laughs> you know what, though? I can be swayed. Oh. I, I can be swayed on Karate Kid. I enjoy, no, I love Karate Kid. You know, don't get me wrong. But is it a movie that I watch all the time, though? No. Mm. And because it's a... Last Dragon Man, I'm telling you, from the start when he is doing those fight in the beginning, it, like over the credits, all the way until where they ascend up into that random stage, I enjoy that movie every second of that movie. I love the uh, the 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 fortune cookie guys. <laughs> Listen, they were they were so funny. fun. They were so funny. They were just they having were themselves so, a good time. Oh yeah. my god! Guys, oh, we're in the Cookie Factory in Chinatown. <laughs> they were more hip than Leroy Green. Okay, <laughs> they knew all the black things, but when they were playing hopscotch, I was cracking up. Hilarious! I said, "Yes, Leroy, you tricked them." And then this is hilarious. And and you know, it's just Daniel LaRusso was obviously not a martial artist. And because I actually watched a little bit of Karate Kid because I was watching Cobra Kai. And I'm just saying, watching Karate Kid gives me those corny 80s vibes in certain, you know what I mean? Like I, I haven't watched it all together, but the point I'm saying is, is that one. I wouldn't be, you know, but this one, I mean, Last Dragon, you know, this is just one of my movies. Well, I feel, I feel like we're ready to vote. Yeah, let's do it. Well, at least one vote is in already. But still, bro, for the the sake of the show format. Oh, I still got to vote. I was letting y'all know what it was going to (laughs) be. Yes, The Last Dragon gets my time off. In full body glow. (laughs) (laughs) This movie also gets my time off, and it does because of I feel like it is a, a little time capsule of the period. You know, I mean the Motown music, the um, the break dancing, the um, the the commitment to like the way that they made martial arts a cultural phenomenon yes. in the in New York in this universe in that in that world. Right. Right. I just thought that felt very, it felt very special. And it felt, it felt, it, it felt like it was thoroughly, thoroughly thought through, thoroughly done. And um, I think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I think there was some real intention around diversity. Because if you think about it, movies were generally kind of like, there, there were certain ways that people of color were portrayed. And so once you got to this era where people of color had, you know, in some gatekeeper, you know, space. It was this 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 decision to have everybody doing everything and having everybody able to show up. And so for that reason alone, I feel like this movie is one worth celebrating. And um I'll also say there is something to me about a sweet love story. You know, I, there, you know, we get a lot of sexy love stories. We got a lot of, um, you know, what we might consider toxic love stories and the way that people come together and stuff like that. I, I thought this was just like a sweet little, you know, infatuation with each other. It wasn't like they got engaged at the end, you know, it was just like, oh, they were into each other. And I think that is the kind of love story I, is refreshing. You know, it didn't have to be some epic love. It was just like they liked each other and that was enough. So I also really appreciated that. So those are some of the reasons why the movie does get my time off. Yes, yeah, so well, I will tell you, it does get my time off. Um, I just, you know, I enjoyed it and I could see myself watching it again. I could see when it's on television, sitting, you know, to watch yeah, well, it. We got to watch together. And, and right and 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 just enjoy it, you know. I um I appreciate just how it was informing a time, and that it had its specific role, and it was going in, and it did what it did. So, I did. I enjoyed it, and it's definitely getting my glowing time mark. 
Yay! Well, there you have it, folks. The Last Dragon is a classic from of the right perspective. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Talk to you later, bro and sis. Love you. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. Love you guys.